Chris, an arborist. Um, this is Binary Jazz, a podcast about nothing and giggles. Um, the premise is uh, Allison brings a topic. Chris and I don't know what the topic is. We, tr- we try to uh, talk intelligently about said topic until the timer in this video session pops up, puts us into a, a panic and tailspin, and then we answer uh, listener questions. So happy you could join us. Oh, you know what we didn't do last week? What didn't we do what, last week? Social stuff. So. I don't know if that's uh, accurate. Talk I don't either, that. actually. I still remember doing it. So. We'll talk about right. social stuff. Um, you can follow us on Twitter. Um, you know what? You can follow us everywhere. Go to binaryjazz.us and find the place that you want to follow us and do that. <laughs> um, also, if you need music genre for anything, we can create that for you. The blistering clip of thousands a day. Yeah, yeah, a thousand, thousand new genres a day. Somehow, I'm not really sure how that works. Um, this is the episode. This is episode ten thousand. Wow. One zero 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 one. Good on us. Yeah. Wait. What? What episode? Ten thousand. One zero 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 one. Ten thousand one. Sorry, ten thousand was last week. Yeah, I like it better when it's 10,101. Because then you will sound like Bender saying 10101. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll get there. (laughs) I hope so. Seems a long way off. (laughs) You guys uh... Four episodes away. Um, Great. So, Chris, there's exciting soccer news this morning. I'm surprised we didn't kick off with that. What exciting soccer news are you thinking? thinking of the uh, uh, Canada, Mexico, United States hosting World Cup in 2020. Oh, I didn't see that. Did that, did that get approved? It's that official. Is that is exciting. Yeah. Um, sadly, Yay. sadly, uh, when I looked, uh, Salt Lake City was not on the host cities, but that's okay because I think I'll make a road trip to... Where do you think oh. your city will be? Um... I thought I think Portland was one of the cities they were talking about. Uh, I think there is at least one uh, city in California, like maybe at the Rose Bowl. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, BBVA uh, Stadium, BBVA Compass Stadium in Houston might have been on the list. I don't. I don't remember. I remember seeing the list a couple months ago, um, mm-hmm. and I wasn't terribly surprised. It was all the like the. I think Seattle too, um, because the Sounders Stadium. Uh, I think it was basically they're looking for the stadiums that could hold the most and that were the most impressive to look at. So, yeah. Where would the nearest to Florida be? <laughs> I don't uh, know. This is my geography of like. Well, I looked at big, the stadium. Big soccer I bumped country. into the stadium list. There was like a list of 35 potential cities, and Jacksonville yeah. was not on those. Atlanta, yeah. Orlando. Uh, in Atlanta Miami. probably makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Although I'm surprised Jacksonville was not on the list because. We host an awful lot of friendlies here. Like, U.S. Mm. men's team plays here. And U.S. women's team play here. I mean, I feel like every... Yeah, but Orlando, if they're doing Orlando, Orlando, if they're doing Orlando, they're probably doing where the, um, where the Orlando, Orlando City SC and the Orlando Pride play, which is a specific stadium. I wonder if they seed enough. Because you also have the Citrus Bowl there, which is, has been That's asked for, for soccer friendlies, and it's... That's it's true. an old stadium, but it's going through renovation. It will be beautiful by the time 2026 rolls around, given yeah, the construction that's rates in Orlando. Probably, that probably that's what they would be thinking, because the Orlando City Stadium, whatever that's called, I don't remember, um, is probably like 20, 25,000 people. Yeah. yeah. Probably, Binary Jazz, where we talk soccer stadium capacity. <laughs> I know it's or a surprising amount about soccer stadium capacity. It's, it's sad, actually. <laughs> well, at least soccer stadium capacity in the United States. Um, outside of the United States, all I know is really big and a lot. Yeah, yeah. I'm look. I mean, I'm excited. And we yeah. and World Cup starts tomorrow, so you know, the it will, the next the next month of episodes here will be all about um, <laughs> football. 
So, Allison, is our topic today football? <laughs> it should be, but I really, I, I, I literally dropped the ball. So, I'm sorry. That's okay. It would have been a penalty if you had, had been holding on to it. It's true. Way. It's true. It would have been a red card. <laughs> <sighs> okay. My topic. <laughs> I know. My top. I, I just. One week I'm actually going to like somehow tie it into the intro seamlessly. Like a ninja. I, I would almost be disappointed if that happened because I feel like the intro is our time to like delay not knowing the time. <laughs> <laughs> to, de to delay the frustration? Well, uh, to at least appear halfway intelligent, you know, in a couple minutes. Yeah. Well, you might know, you might know the topic. You knew, you knew Apex Predators. Yeah. Yeah, that was a little lightweight, though. I'm sorry. No. It's true. I'm, I'm just, I like experimenting with different, yeah, it's, it's an interesting, I feel like Apex it's the best predator. science experiment, yeah. Neither Apex so topic, nor Predator. You might know the topic this week, I don't know. You might pull out some sort of weird niche knowledge that I wasn't aware you had. Um, but the topic this week is Panchen Llama. I can spell it. You're going to have to. Yeah, it's two words. Because <laughs> I'm thinking like something like Pantheon and Llama, like the animal. Yeah, and I'm very familiar with llamas. Yeah, I'm, I'm fairly familiar with llamas, but, but not the panchens. Panchen is P-A-N-C-H-E-N, and llama is L-A-M-A. -A. And it's one word? Or two, two words. words. It is two llama. words. Llama is separate. Okay. Okay, so is that like, so I'm, I'm reading a series, uh, I'm reading a series of books with the kids uh, by Garth Nix. Um, it's the, I don't know if it's called the Sabriel series or the Aborson series, but anyway, there's this, uh, the Aborson is a character, so there, there's, it, it's this world where um, magic exists and both doesn't and where magic exists is actually in a physical geographic area so if you think of like england like the top part of england is the old kingdom and that's where magic is alive and then there's a wall and everything south of the wall uh does not get magic and the farther away from the wall the less magic works and if you go north of the wall then like mechanical and man-made stuff doesn't work so in this world uh there is uh the concept of free magic uh, and also charter magic. Charter magic is kind of like the force. It's infused in all things, and it's also like an actual, uh, like sort of a, a written document. Uh, so if the force was like uh, a text of some kind, then that would be charter magic, and there are charter stones where, where the charter magic is infusing the stones to sort of make the charter more powerful and more binding. Um, and charter mages are sort of like the good ones and like the ones that understand and, and are one with the ultimate flow of, of magic that, that infuses all things. And uh, then their free magic is just sort of like rogue sorcerers who do stuff that isn't bound by the charter. So it's generally more like chaotic and destructive. Okay. Uh, and Additionally, there's this concept of going into death, which is uh, the realm of necromancers. Necromancers typically are free magic magicians, uh, and they will take dead spirits and dead bodies and bind them to their will and make them do stuff that's really nasty. Um, but there's also the abortion, uh, which is the sort of central pivotal character. The abortion is a different person in each generation. Um, kind of like uh, the Highlander, like there can be only one, but at any given time there might be an abortion and sort of like the next generation. That's kind of that is the abortion and waiting, uh, which is the book that we're waiting we're reading right now. Is there's a new abortion and waiting? Um, and anyway, where was I going with this? Uh, <laughs> oh, right. Okay. I don't know, but I'm starting that's to believe that you either wrote these books yourself because <laughs> of your fan of knowledge. No, it's all no, like. No. I, I do have a point. I remember what my point was. Okay, so so there's the abortion waiting. Abortion is 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 a creature, as a character, as a person who can go into death, but is also a is also a charter mage, and um, is the only 
uh, is the only person who can all who can both wield charter magic and uh, be a necromancer at the same time. And rather than being destructive and using uh, spirits of the dead to bind them to their will, they are um, helping those spirits uh, continue on into death and um, and destroying the raised dead creatures by sending them on into death. Do, um, do you? Good. Finish up. Okay, so so there's the abortion and then there's the abortion and waiting. And so here's where it comes together. Okay. <laughs> the, just just the, the uh, pollen I just have llama. To ask. The pollen llama is like the abortion and waiting <laughs> or the Dalai Lama. <laughs> I was it's just about to next, ask, and you've answered my question. Do you remember the what the topic thing. is? Was what I was gonna ask you. <laughs> it's the next And one. I believe that it was it was answered right there. Yes. <laughs> no, I, the answer was no. <laughs> Don't recall what the topic was. <laughs> it was pension. 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 The pension Not llama. Pollen. Is the, is the, he said the pollen the llama. Next... Pollen, said yes. pollen llama. Yes. <laughs> it's so satisfying. The pension llama is, is the next thing. <laughs> I had forgotten what it was by the time I got to the the, the circle. Yeah. So I appreciate your excitement. It has nothing to do with magic whatsoever. Well, no, it's, but like the Dalai Lama is like so is is similar to the Pope, where it's sort of like mystically selected by, uh, I don't know, God or something. Um, it, and it's a culinary term, Chris. It's a culinary <laughs> term. Lama. It is. Well, Pension, <laughs> and and it's so a small pickled carrot, <laughs> and the llama is the, pres- the preparation. Pinchon? What's that? Isn't that a pinchon? Pinchon. Isn't that P-I-N-C-H-O-N? I, I was, I was going to say... You understand how this show works, correct? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that I was like, these books sound interesting, but I actually don't know if I need to read them at this point because I feel you like do, I got... I'm, I'm just sort of glossing over the general premise. There's still like all the character stuff. But it's good. You should read it. I'm concerned your summary covered <laughs> too much. <laughs> anyway, the point is... The Panchen Lama is the next Dalai Lama. So there's the Dalai Lama, and when the Dalai Lama dies or whatever, then the Panchen Lama becomes the Dalai Lama, and then it's the new Dalai Lama. Just like the when the Pope Lama dies, is like the Dalai Lama in waiting. Yes, exactly. <laughs> or do I we? Feel or, like we could have gotten there a lot faster. Nope, nope. Need the whole <laughs> need the whole explanation. No, I'm yeah, still convinced it, it's a culinary it, it used up, It used up, what, like five, ten minutes of, of the show? That's awesome. Thir- Thirteen. <laughs> Thirteen. Pretty it's sure we've had a problem, like, filling sure content in the past, so it's... I don't understand sure what's it's happening Gary, today. Get, Gary got up and let the dog out <laughs> during the explanation. I thought Gary was getting up and just walking away. I thought, <laughs> like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> I'm out. We'll be done speaking. It's like the laptop screen not closing. Then. <laughs> Wouldn't that be weird if that was the breaking point, though, of all the all the topics or all the tangents like that? <laughs> that enough? <laughs> that Book was reviews are over the line. <laughs> yeah, that crossed some sort of line in the sand for you, where you're like, I had enough. Yeah, had enough yeah. discussion of literature. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as reasonable as that sounds, given I'm a Floridian, right? I, I we would probably discuss it first off air before I'd rage quit over. Over book discussion. I'd like to think so. <laughs> Although, I mean, the visual of it would be just, wow, he just, he, he <laughs> left, but he left his camera on, which I feel like is quite the statement. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so done with this. I'm not even going to use this computer again. <laughs> <laughs> I am um, <clears throat> non sequitur. I was bit in the middle of the back is by there, a spider. Is there anything sequitur about this show? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a very good point. Wait, sorry, you were bitten by a spider? <laughs> yes, a wolf spider. This is about that big. That, yeah, I was like, that's, you didn't, obviously you didn't see it coming. No, it was in my back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was helping my neighbor move some branches and, and then I felt something crawling in my shirt. I reached back there and then boom. Then it. Oh my gosh. What do you do? I'm really that? hope, I hoping that I develop superpowers. Oh, oh. Um, I, I mean, what do you do? You, you, and nothing, really. I mean, it just. I love that you just. You're like flexing your arms, like. I'm hoping. This like, is how this works. Yeah. One of these days. I don't know what muscle yeah. to use. Pretty sure you need the costume and then, then the wrist flicking. Actually. No, no, because Peter Parker had the powers before he made the costume. So. 
I'm just trying to get Gary to dress up in a weird costume. That's true. That's true. We do need Gary to work very hard. <laughs> like, I'm pretty uh, sure there's a weird costume that's necessary for this. Do we? I don't think we have a Spider-Man costume here. I have a lot of food. Food costumes or just yeah. food in general? Well, costume and, and food. I don't know if we have a lot of food. Do we have a lot of food costumes? <laughs> I feel like that idea I, I need to explore more as far as to the whys, but maybe maybe I don't actually want to know. I just we, we kind of do like family themes for Halloween. I feel like, like I've seen Gary things. in a hot dog costume. But like, what's the theme for like what else was there other than the hot dog? Like, what other? There food? was pizza. Um, there was uh, coffee and a donut. Coffee. Yeah. Like a cup of coffee. Yeah. Oh. Well, I don't know. I just pictured like a brown blob, like spilled coffee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just like, that's kind of a bummer. Short straw. Like a brown shirt. What are you? I'm coffee. I'm really trying hard here. Um, <laughs> One of your kids is like, my dad made me dress up as coffee. <laughs> yeah. Or the. Uh, I think the dog now. Or we get um, tacos. <laughs> Gary's storming off again. <laughs> also, so what surprises me. That sky. What surprises me is that this is the first time I have left. Oh, this is better. This is first nice view of my armpit too. This is the first time I've left um, um left camera during the show, I think, right? Maybe. I, uh, I left camera a lot if you count me ducking out of screen from laughing yeah, too hard. It's true. I um I, I feel like every time I get on a call, my dog's like, Oh, I need to go outside. So I'm surprised this hasn't happened before that we got on a call and the dog is like, Well, as is my custom, you need to let me out, right? So are you in like a sunroom? It's beautiful. It's just it's just a patio. It's um it's nice it's today. Patio. Yeah. Well, Don't take your patio for granted, Gary. <laughs> it's, it's raining. Patio here. With a dead whatever that thing is. That was a plant. There's still a plant. It's just dead now. Um, it's uh it gets it gets a little warm because the roof is metal and uh, the floor is concrete. So we get like in the 90s um, in the patio when it's 80 mid 80s outside, but uh, fans and stuff it works out okay. I'm trying to figure out how to cool it down a bit so I can work out here more. Over my shoulder. You need to hire see. people with uh, palm fronds. That's the answer to that I question. can't see. Maybe it's behind my chair. There's a, the tree fort hmm. is over there. And there's a new addition of a swing. You, you both live in magical places with just like the most outdoorsy. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go to more parks, clearly. I'm just like, oh. Yes. How can I fit a hammock on my tiny patio? <laughs> <laughs> so the overhead one, like the single hook, the like chair thing, might not be a bad option. It's, it's <laughs> really easy to use a computer in it. More of the cocoon. Well, no. Oh, uh, here. I'll show you. <laughs> he's gonna go get one. He's not mobile today. <laughs> he's gonna come back. Yeah. Here it is. It looks like this. Also, audio podcast. Here it is. It looks like this. <laughs> so it's just like a single single hook on top and then how many hammocks do you have <laughs> just two two seems to be sufficient <laughs> two seems to be sufficient i am so familiar with i am familiar with that kind though yeah it, and it's yeah. it's super comfy and easy to use a laptop in i think the issue with our little patio is that there's nothing to hang it from there's no there's no over over thing and we wouldn't be able to stick something into the side of the building because because structural integrity. <laughs> so they do make like a metal stand for those. Maybe. It's like a big arch kind of deal. I, I haven't used that. I'd rather, I guess, like hurt trees apparently. Like taking the old hooks. In. I don't know. I feel badly about that. Maybe an Oh, that's not true. I, ha I, uh, I bought some hooks to hang a hammock indoors. Um, there's this, um, uh, they like, they go into the studs like in a, like yeah, across the corner. To, you so need you to can, find the studs, yeah. So you can hang a, so I, I mean, they're like really like built for this and they kind of have a pivot in them. So it's really, it really seems like it would be stable. Um, but I bought them and then I'm like, it's not going to be a great conversation with Rhonda when I say, hey, I'm going to stick a hammock right here. Take up 25% you know, of this room. <laughs> so I still have the hooks. I haven't done anything with them. Yeah. She's not pro hammock. How can she not be pro hammock? She's not pro 25% she's... She's of a room space. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, three kids running around. Well, two kids are running around. I think it wasn't run yet. Like, I, was gonna say, I was just like, wait a minute. 
my children timeline is not great i know but <laughs> charlotte should not be running at this point so so gary if if, if pension uh llama is a culinary term what is the culinary yeah. term for we covered that it's it's a it's a pickled carrot oh right a, a carrot a carrot and and i think that is i think uh, yeah 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 has to be pickled and i think the um that's the panchon right and the llama portion is the preparation that makes it spreadable as though it were like a hummus well it sounds delicious i'm on board <laughs> yeah yeah so you have a penchant for punch and llama i uh, today i do yeah, yeah I do. <laughs> and and from what from what part of the world is this uh, culinary delicacy from gary it's indian it's indian India. obviously yeah yeah okay. i mean Obviously, I'm trying, I'm trying to think if I know the word for for carrot from some Indian dish, but I I don't. I know. Are car are, are carrots prevalent in India? I don't. It's not in any dish that I've ever known, and I don't. And Aaron, who yeah. has been to India, has never said, "Oh, and we had so many carrots." So uh, I'm going <laughs> to say carrots. No. You really need to get there, right? The, the carrots are just to die for. <laughs> so I'm going to say no. Bollywood I'm going to say there's there are carrots. Okay. So, spinach limited magic. Beans. What do you spread it on? Um bread. Anything? I mean, I would spread it on an English muffin personally, but um you know, I, I have a <laughs> strange cuz of all the nooks and crannies. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right, clearly. Um, you know, probably some kind of cracker. Like a yeah. Like a flatbread. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah very much so. We expect recipes uh, in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to write the recipe. I'm not happy to try the recipe. Yeah, right. No, someone else can do that. Are, are there spices involved? There sure would have to be. Surely, I would assume that what makes it spreadable is, is um, uh, the application of pressure and heat. Or... Yeah, so you need a pressure cooker to make it spreadable, right? I mean, perhaps. <laughs> I'm hesitant to agree with you because I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. That's I'm exactly hesitant to disagree with you. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you should just keep going. And <laughs> on, on yeah, I think you should use a pressure cooker. And once it's pickled, you throw a, 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 a bushel of pension in there, right? And a then... Bushel. <laughs> a bushel. Right? Well, how else would you? How else would you store them? Um, and then uh, you apply heat and pressure until it's spreadable. Yeah. Couldn't you just blend it, like in a blender, without the pressure cooker? I suppose you could, but that takes away some of the uh, hardiness. Right. right. By breaking, by using like you know slower process to break down the. Um, the things that. <laughs> need to be I, I, down. I would disagree with that. <laughs> Being, really? being the proud owner of a blend tech, I would disagree with that. I, I, being, yeah, and being the proud owner of a Vitamix, I also disagree. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Chris and I are blender people. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's kind of scary that blender people is really a thing, but it is. I've never, yeah. I've never regretted my purchase. <laughs> I've never, I mean, yeah, what's fun about the blend tech is it tells you it has a running count of how many times you've used it. Um, so, isn't it? So, like, mine's at 2,000 something. Oh, I wish mine had that. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. I just have, like, an estimate in my head of, like, well, I use it every day, sometimes. Yeah. And here what I kind am. Of do you have, Gary? <laughs> I don't. Here I am as, like, you know, this, this uh, caveman. Like just scratching the count of how many times I've used my pressure cooker into the side of it, right? <laughs> to keep track. Do you not blend things? Uh, margaritas. That counts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, no, blender is not is not an appliance that's prominent in our kitchen. Interesting. I feel like for me, it will be soon be though because, food. like you know, when Charlotte starts eating uh, real food, we will do a lot of steaming and blending of carrots not pickled mind you probably some other veggies too and, and all sorts of fun stuff yeah maybe yep. pancho pancho llama is like 
Could be a delicious baby food, though. Mm. You guys so anyway, some spices the, for for your uh, for your steaming process. I feel like you could uh, boil the carrots for a short amount of time, just enough to get them soft, and then throw them into a blender, uh, a high speed blender, and then put in your spices. And I feel like there should be garlic in there, like lots of garlic. Like yeah, really? garlic, garlic does seem to fit, doesn't it? I have to go find pickled carrots somewhere. Oh. Yeah. How long yeah. does it take to pickle something? A week. <laughs> we can pickle that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know how long it takes to pickle something. My sister. No, um, Gary, you know, you know, it's a week. That's how long. That's how long it is. My sister gave me pickles. Mm, I don't know for what though. They were good. For what? Because I mean, it's like it was, it, was a, it was an event. It was a holiday. It was a celebration. I don't know if it was Christmas or if it was like a birthday you need, or. You don't need an occasion. You don't need an event for pickles. I agree, but she, but but she she saw it as a double like you know double dip like here are pickles and also we are celebrating whatever this thing we're celebrating is. So here are pickles in celebration of that. And so, you can't even it remember. It was great, and they were good. And you can't even remember why. <sighs> a little slap in the face. <laughs> um, that to me is not the most um, um, surprising part of the situation. <laughs> they were party pickles, and you don't remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a family gathering. Goodness sakes! And the bag they came in was cold because they had been refrigerated. Hmm. Wow. Now it would make sense it was Christmas because we do um, hot whiskey and honey on Christmas Day. So that's it. That's all. <laughs> well, no, we also eat things, but I mean, when you start your morning with like a shot of whiskey, wow, the, rest of the day gets a little hazy, you know. My Christmases are normally hazy, but not because of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just because of like normal Christmas cheer, but I've been doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah, clearly. Yeah, I don't know why that's a thing, but but it's a thing. It's been a family thing. I mean, I don't know my whole life. So everybody just does a, sh a shot of whiskey before they start the day. I mean, it's it's a little more formal than that, but not not an awful lot. I mean, usually we're at my parents' house, and my dad comes around with like you know shot glasses of hot whiskey and honey he's been making in the stove. And, That's you know, amazing. Some people sip that? it, and some people just you know slam it. <laughs> that that yeah. he's been making in the stove. I mean, on the on the stove top, yeah, he's just like in a pan, like saute pan, throw some whiskey. And like honey he in mixes it. the honey in with the whiskey himself, and, and a then. bit of butter, yeah, a touch of butter. Yeah. Not, not a lot, just a touch. Fascinating, yeah. just yeah. fascinating tradition. Just I've never flammable material on top of a stove is generally. I don't think fire. it's I don't think it's high enough proof to catch fire, because hmm. I feel like at this point it would have in my life, because if you have a lot of people over, right, the first round goes quickly, so then you have to make more. I feel like that's when the fire would start, you know, <laughs> like, like as you're preparing like the second round and that's never happened. So I don't think it's very flammable. It would, it would definitely be part of the family lore had it, had it happened. <laughs> you know, it would be, go down in family history of like, remember the one. Yeah. Remember when yeah, Uncle Joe made whiskey? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah coffee, that coffee tradition would end. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know if that tradition would end. Traditions die hard, you know? It's true. So I feel like we've 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 got our two options, our two arguments for what Pancham is, and we haven't really expanded on on any other potential idea. So I feel like it has to be one of those two things, obviously. Uh, so I think that that must mean that it's time to uh, reveal Find what out. it actually is, and which one of us is correct. The great reveal. Which which is me, obviously. <laughs> I mean, so, I, I talked about why I was correct for 10 minutes in a completely unrelated uh, subject, so obviously. How could that have possibly been in vain? I wasn't, I wasn't quite sure with that tangent if it was going to come full circle or well, not. Well, you know, I did forget why I was talking about those books halfway through. <laughs> and then I remembered and remembered why it was on topic. Um, so... Even though I am going to go explore this recipe option, the pa the Panchen Mama is uh, basically the second in line to the Dalai Lama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, 
deep sigh from Gary. <laughs> um, I mean, I thought like that wasn't even his answer, though. His answer was like, here's like a meandering path down some books that, I want to talk about. To the subject and the word llama the is thing. the same as the word in Dalai Lama, so why not? Like, I, I don't feel like, I feel like maybe half a point at best. <laughs> I guess we're keeping a score now. That's a new thing, too. So. <laughs> I know. Wow, we just really upped the ante as far as competitiveness. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's the sore loser, Gary. They were, well, we're not keeping a score, so I didn't... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a really bizarre title. So the title Panchen means great scholar, and they weren't always linked as far as Panchen Lama and Dalai Lama. And actually, lately, there's, like, a controversy because it's it's a similar idea of reincarnation as the Dalai Lama. Um, and the most recent Panchen Lama, the 11th, it's 10th or 11th, I think, um, there's a huge disagreement because basically um, the current Dalai Lama is like, this is the Panchen Lama. Um, and the Chinese government is like, actually, no, it's not. It's this guy over here. Um, and the one that is the Tibetans, recognized disappeared um so it's, it's a very interesting um conundrum of like who's recognized as what so um and it doesn't necessarily mean so when the dalai lama passes away it doesn't mean that the panchen lama takes his place it's just kind of like a second in command rather than like the second in line um mm. but they i guess supposedly like recognize each other reincarnation wise as history continues um yeah, it's yeah kind because of the Dalai Lama is is really like um, like it's just a spirit that passes through time, and after the Dalai Lama is gone, then they start looking for the next Dalai Lama as it is appears in some small child on the street somewhere or something. Yeah, yeah, like because in the '90s, the Dalai Lama recognized this six-year-old boy as the Panchen Lama. But then the Chinese government rejected that choice and then took the boy into custody. And now nobody really knows where he is. Um, and then the Chinese government appointed someone else, the Panchen Lama. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, it's odd. Yeah, it's everything like the gets you everything in China can't. Yeah, the politicization, politicization? Yeah, that's a word. Uh, of the Dalai Lama is also a really interesting kind of horrible thing. Yeah, it's very tangled and like, I heard the term and then was like, that's interesting. And then I was digging more and not realizing how much controversy I was digging up in my tangled web of, of research. Especially when it crosses over to like being a spiritual ruler and, and being recognized. I live in a neighborhood that's um, like little Tibet. Um, and so it's like a huge population of Tibetan people. Um, so there's a lot of Tibetan holidays that are celebrated and lots of pictures of the Dalai Lama. And it's interesting because I'm, it's like, I, I, I'm kind of curious and I want to ask now I want to ask more, but then I'm like, Oh, how, how tangled of a conversation am I going to get in sure. with the political nature of it? Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it comes down to the, the fact that, that governments understand and recognize that the Dalai Lama is a, is a powerful uh, religious figure with a lot of uh, support and acknowledgement and whatever, and they want to control that. They want to gain control of the people through that means, and so obviously they would pick as, as much as they possibly can. Mm -hmm. They're their folks. I'm like, no, this dude. Yeah. And it's like it's this guy. No, no, it's this guy. Yeah. And the previous pension lama refused to like because when the current Dalai Lama. Um, was denounced by the Chinese government. They tried to get the Panchen Lama on board and he refused and so then they put him in prison. And It's just a very, it's really, it's also just kind of an interesting, interesting concept to have everybody be reincarnated and then have the Dalai Lama recognize, be like, that's him. Like, I just, I think the whole concept is really interesting. Do you think, <clears throat> spinning it around a little, do you think as a Dalai Lama there's, there's like stress and pressure in that situation? Like, what if I don't recognize him, right? Like, yes. does that mean that I, I am not Dalai Lama at that point? Like, did someone 
misrecognize me. Like it has to be a very stressful situation. Well, I mean, as stressful as it can be for the Dalai Lama because inherently. He's like the calmest seeming dude right. in the world. Right. Right. <laughs> but also like, I was thinking about this, like, I've, I don't know, I've had, okay, so I've had tons of presidents, it feels like. I've had a lot of popes, but I've only had one Dalai Lama my entire life, um, which is just kind of an interesting, he just feels very, like, similar to the queen, where I'm like, he's a real mainstay as far as figures in politics and religion. And also ravishing in that purple dress, so... <laughs> He's a real knockout, I won't lie. <laughs> <laughs> this was a fun topic. I mean, I wish that we had spent less time being goofy about it. <laughs> Chris. I, I have a new recipe. I'm going to try once I down some pickled carrots. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so we have uh, about three and a half minutes, and we have some listener questions. Uh, let's get to them. We didn't get we didn't get an influx of new listener questions, uh, which is a shame. Uh, we should get an influx of new listener questions. I'm looking at you, listeners, uh, and you can do that by going to the website uh, binaryjazz.us. Scroll down to the bottom of the page. There's a form there, um, and alternately, you can go to binaryjazz.us/contact, and it's the exact same form. All right. So uh, or tweet us or tweet us at at binaryjazz. Um, so Lisa would like to know what is the greatest amount of money you would spend on surgery for your otherwise healthy and young or middle-aged dog before deciding their time had come? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, this is a hard one. Um, it's so contingent on income, right? I, mean, I feel like it would depend on the issue. Yeah, I, 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 when I read this the first time, um, I felt like it had a lot to do with like quality of life. Like I'm, you know, if, if, if their quality of the, of life is, is being affected and um, it's something where they could live a number of years healthily, other, if, if whatever surgery was done, then I think um, that that would probably be the deciding factor. Yeah. Oh, that's tough. But it also <laughs> is dependent upon income. I mean, yeah. Also true. It's one of the reasons I don't have a dog is because I don't have enough capability to stash enough away for like an emergency fund for the just in cases that happen um, that you don't necessarily anticipate for owning. We haven't had any any like major health issues with our cats like ever um, with the exception of I mean we just had we've just had cats die. Um, yeah. But they, we, there hasn't been like an issue that they, we needed to go to the vet to have surgery or something to take care of. Oh. <laughs> it's Hello. <laughs> it's the face of the question. <laughs> I would do anything for that dog. <laughs> right? um, <clears throat> this one had this like weird growth under his eye. We had to remove because it was, just got bigger and he would bang his head into things and like break it open. And I think we spent or 500 bucks on that. And he was miserable afterwards. But he's fine now. I mean, other than being like dopey. You know, not the smartest one. Just inherently dopey. I yeah. don't I feel like I would I would I would spend upwards of thousands if I had it. Like I, I don't Right. I, yeah. But, so there's not a number is the answer, sadly. Like yeah. it's contingent on the available cash. There's garbage, garbage pickup happening on my end. <laughs> <laughs> well we have another question but we also have less than a minute so i feel like the next question should wait until uh next week i like lisa's questions lisa send in more questions <laughs> lisa send in more questions <laughs> oh. <sighs> a slice. i'm gonna go track down some pickled carrots and uh see what i can wrestle up i i'm looking forward to seeing pictures of this orange concoction spread on some kind of the, you know there probably is a name for the thing that you invented um and and i would be very interested to know what that name is besides well sp sp spreadable pickled carrots pickled.
Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.